What's up all you Satisfactory boys and girls out there? Welcome to the third episode of my How to Satisfactory series. A series I've designed to show you how to play the game. It's a tutorial, a walkthrough of everything you're going to learn how to do. From landing on the planet for the first time to building a grand factory. So I do know that when the first time you play this game, it can be a little eh, disconcerting on, on what all you have to do. So that's why I come up with this series to show the new player out there how to play the game. Alright, so what we are going to do today is we are getting ready to build a actual starter factory over here. So this is actually probably the third time I've actually recorded this. And there's no way I can do this, uh, everything I need to get through in one episode because it would be an hour and a half long. And I don't want to do a video that long. I, I just don't. So, we are going to put off building the actual factory today, but what we are going to do is do some pre-things beforehand. So there's a couple more things we got to go through before we can get to that. So one of the first things you want to do before we get started, you may need to pause the video before we do this, and if so, please feel free to do so, but make sure you go around, gather some resources such as your your biomass basically go go gather leaves and wood from what you can find you want to get a bunch of that and then you want to come over here and go to your crafting station you want to make the biomass so what you can make sure that every one of your biomass burners over here actually have enough biomass in it to go while we're doing this if, like i said if you need to go ahead and pause the game while you are doing so okay for those who needed to welcome back all right now, what we're going to do today, like I said, is do some pre-requirements before building this the actual like kind of factory here. So, as you can see here, what we have is everything we've done in the last episode. We've built, kind of rebuilt most of these machines here. And one thing we're going to do today is we're actually going to split this right here. I'm going to take this out and I'm just going to let the, this kind of go. Actually, I might be able to even like, rip that out of there. And then just connect that back into that. All right, so I want to put a constructor over here because uh, we don't have anything making screws. So I thought, you know what, let's, let's make some screws. And that should do. All right, so we line that up with that using the guidelines right there. And we're going to just plug that into there. And hey, can I get a... I can. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Now, I'm going to take these, and I'm going to turn these, oops, I'm going to turn those into screws. There we go. So what we're doing is essentially we are taking the iron rods that this machine is making. We're sending them into this machine to make some screws. And then we're probably going to need a somewhere to put these things right here. So mm, I'm actually going to do this right here. I'm going to put this on top right there and I'm gonna face it so that the entry to the container is facing the opposite direction than the one on the bottom and the way we're gonna do that is as you can see here we have the yellow lines going that way that means that's the input I mean it's kind of obvious but you know then again maybe it's not so everyone plays the game at their own pace one of the next things I want to go over is I was asked in one of my videos uh, about what is at the bottom middle and the bottom right of our bottom screen. So we have the hot bar is in the middle. Obviously your health is on the left hand side. The middle is your hot bar and shortcuts is on the right hand on the bottom down there. So the hot bar, we kind of went over the hot bar in the last episode and I'm going to go over a little more detail in that here in just a moment. But the shortcuts key is basically things that tells you, uh, you know, like B B is your flashlight. So, some of you probably have noticed that it's never nighttime while I'm recording. But you have probably experienced nighttime. And it's really hard to do anything at night because, well, it's, it's dark at night. Uh, I haven't actually discussed this because I have a mod that is basically makes everything always daylight in my game. Uh, it makes it easier to do the tutorial and talk about it, but I just wasn't really thinking about it. But you do have a flashlight in the game and you can hit that by pressing B. So if you didn't know that, there you go. And then it also it tells you that Q brings up your builder. Uh, F is your building tool. Uh, and then we discussed this one once before. We have N. This is your quick search. Also a great calculator. 
Uh, we went over that in one of the early episodes. Uh, v is your scanner. Uh, o is mail. And then tab, of course, is your inventory. So uh, if you ever forget what those are, just always remember there's a shortcuts key on the bottom down there if you need it. I always forget that's down there, so I never really worry about it. But yeah. All right, and then we have our shortcut bar, which is in the middle. So the shortcut bar is essentially your shortcuts. So we talked about this where you can press one and you have your power pole. You have two for power lines, three. But what you notice, there's a lot of empty spots right there. Well, how do you add something to the hot bar? Well, that's pretty easy. Just go to Q to bring up your build menu. And let's say I want to add splitters to my hot bar. Well, we'll go to logistics. We'll go down here to conveyor mergers and splitters. And say I want to add the splitter, because the splitter is the one we use the most often. I'm gonna add that as the six button on my hotbar. So I just highlight it where it's orange, and then I hit the number six on the keyboard. It's that simple. That's how you add it to the hotbar. The conveyor lifts, we're gonna add that as number five. There we go. See, pretty easy. Uh, we can go down through here, we can add other stuff. Uh, we can add, say, foundations if we want to do that, which we will go ahead and do, actually. Go ahead and take the number mm, two foundation, the foundation one meter, two meter, and four meter, you'll notice you'll have. We got these at the end of the last episode. So go ahead and take your two meter foundation, and we're going to add that as, uh, I'm going to add it as zero, which is the very end down there. We also have walls as well. Um, we can add those if you want. I'm not going to today. Power is fine, so I don't need to add those. Uh, production, I'm actually going to not really do anything with those either for today. So, yeah. Uh, specials, and then we hub map. Yeah, everything is good, so we don't need to add anything else down into the hotbar right now. Feel free to do so if you want. Now, here's another little trick. And I honestly didn't know about this until after update five, but apparently it came in somewhere around update four, I think it was. Maybe even three, but I never knew about it. So if you hold Alt and then use your scroll wheel, you'll notice the hotbar changes. That's what's that? One, two, three, four? Well, we have 10 different hotbars that you can fix down here. And then all the way back to one. So this is really cool because you can now have multiple hotbars. So say you're working in fluids like oil, water, things like that. Once you get to that point in the game and you want an entire hotbar that is nothing but the stuff you work with with fluids. Well, you could totally do that. Say you just want something for a special project. Well, you can set that up too. And it's just as easy. So you just hold down the alt key, move your space or your uh, scroll bar on, or scroll wheel on your mouse. I, I may be able to talk today, we'll see. Uh, and then you can get to whichever one you want to do, either you know two, three, four, and then do the same thing you want to do how I taught you a minute ago to add things to your hotbar. And you can set those up multiple ways. All right, but today we're just gonna go with number one here. All right, so back to what we were doing. We have this container here that's on top. How are we going to add the screws to the one on top? Well, we haven't used these yet, so go ahead and if you set your vertical lift up as the fifth hotbar key, go ahead and do that right now. Add it to the top, bring it down, and then you can use your scroll wheel and you can rotate this on the bottom. So I'm going to rotate that like that, make that easy, and then I'm just going to plop that in there like that, and that's going to send those screws that we're making right here into the top conveyor box. Now, again, all of this looks like junk, but it, it's all a huge mess. But that's what the starter factory is for when we actually get into that later on. But for the time being, we're going to head over here. And we are going to take a look at our hub terminal. Now, we finished up all of Tier 1 in the last episode. So let's go ahead and start looking at Tier 2. Now, one of the main things that I want to get into today, for 100% sure, is we want to do obstacle clearing. Now, we have parts assembly that you can do. We have obstacle clearing. We have jump pads, which in my opinion is, you know, I don't really like the jump pads. I, I never really use them, but some people do. So they're handy to some people. But I think this is probably probably the last thing we're gonna do. Um, anyway, we have the resource sync program. This is handy. We'll get into this later. 
We have Logistics MK2. This is going to make our conveyor belts and stuff even better. Uh, much faster. We can put more things on conveyor belts. Move more stuff faster around, essentially. But I think the most important one right now is obstacle clearing. Now that's going to give us the chainsaw so we can cut down trees, lead, you know, like bushes, things like that, and clear out areas much faster. It's going to give us solid biofuel. The solid biofuel is much better to burn than biomass. It burns a little slower and it provides, well, I would say it provides more power, but really it doesn't. It just kind of, it's, it's the most energy efficient form of solid biomass. Uh, so, yeah, so if you're going to use a chainsaw, you need this. And will also give us an extra three inventory slots. And inventory, inflated pockets, is always good to have. Alright, so we're going to go over here. I'm going to make that my milestone. And we're going to work towards that. So, I've already got some cable and some screws and stuff made. But you may not. So, I would suggest kind of waiting around until you get all the materials here. Which, it shouldn't take long. We've got the screws being made over here now. You should already have iron rods right there. You have that. The only thing we don't have being made is cable. So you can just go grab some wire way over there out of your copper thing and just make you some cable. That's that's no biggie. Uh, but if you want to automate that, you can. Just be careful of how much power you have to actually use. Okay. So now that we have all that, you know, like I said, if you need to, pause the game. Work on that. Or pause the video, I should say. Work on getting your resources. Come back when you're done. All right, and now that you're done and you've got all the pieces you need, let's go ahead and plop those in there. And some concrete there. And we're gonna push the big red button. And there we go. Sending off all those materials to our robot overlords in space who look down upon us in disdain as we try to, you know, clear out this planet of its resources. All right, so now that we have the chainsaw, we have to make it, and we're gonna go over here to the equipment workshop, plop in here for a minute, and the chainsaw. Now, the chainsaw is not cheap. It requires 15 cable, 160 screws, which can be a little bit of much, considering we just spent 500 just to unlock it. So now we're gonna need another 160. But we, like I said, we do have screws being made over there. It shouldn't take you too long to get these. 25 rods and five reinforced plates. I already have all these, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make the chainsaw. And now that we have the chainsaw, uh, we're gonna need something to run into the chainsaw. We're gonna need the solid biofuel, because that's what the chainsaw runs on. So let's head over here. You know, I wanna talk about this real quick before I do this. The chainsaw runs on solid biofuel. That makes no sense to me. Because it should run on like liquid of some sort, like gas or something. But you don't get gas until like a little bit later on down the down the road, or unless you just went to Taco Bell. Anyway, um, yeah. So I don't understand why it doesn't use gas really, except for the fact that you need it now. And it seems like if it ran on solid biofuel, it would run on just regular biomass. But I digress. Anyway, we're going to need to make a little bit of solid biofuel before we can actually use the chainsaw. So let's jump in here and we're going to go down to our biomass section and you'll see biofuel down here. Now you probably already have some biomass, so we're going to turn that biomass into solid biofuel. Uh, 20 should do, so just go ahead and start making you some here. All right, so now we have a little bit of solid biofuel. Uh, it's not a lot, but this should be fine. And, you know, because the chainsaw doesn't use a lot, so we, we don't need a lot. So just take a few moments there just to make a little bit. And then we're going to go into our inventory and we're going to take the chainsaw and put it into our one hand. And it, you get this really cool animation. This thing's pretty sweet, actually. I like how it unsheaves itself there when it just, like, pops out. That's pretty cool. I really like that. And, yeah. So one thing real quick I want to warn you about. The chainsaw cannot be used as a weapon. Unlike Leatherface, nope, in this game, it doesn't make a very good weapon to fight uh, any of the creatures in the game. So if you go out and you're thinking, all right, this thing's going to be awesome now, bring on a charger or something, uh, you're good. You're going to have a bad time. It does not work on that. So let's head back to our inventory and make sure we got our Xeno Zapper in our hands there. All right. Now we've got the chainsaw in our hands. It's fueled up with 20 solid biofuel at least. 
we're going to head out and we're going to start looking for some things to cut down which is probably going to be right over here in this area right over here. Alright, so if we come over here into this corner over here, and let's just move up to any of these little trees and bushes and stuff. So, you see how this has like a few things around it here? So, if I cut, say, this one in the middle, I should get all three of these at once. There we go. And then you'll see you just got 51 leaves and some other stuff. Uh, also, I want to warn you, we should probably clear out our inventory because, I mean, yeah, you're going to need some space here to cut these things down. And you don't want to waste materials by having it go nowhere. Uh, I don't know if they ever fixed that so that it won't let you cut something down or not. But just in case, let's go over here and clear out inventory. So we don't need the pellberries. We don't need any of the alien carapaces. Uh, you can actually throw your biomass in here right now for the moment, too. And these quartz crystals... And uh, throw these portable miners in there too. We don't need those right now. And that that should probably do. And then hit sort. And then that clears us up some space here. Alright, now we've got that cleared out. Let's go cut down some trees. Now I would recommend getting about a thousand leaves. And maybe close to that in wood. So... We're just going to go around. We're just going to cut down as much stuff as we can. Basically, get a lot is, is what I'm trying to say. Also, make sure you just take your time. Uh, no reason to rush this. You have time while other materials and stuff are being made. Also, one other thing I want to kind of have you guys do is over here in front of where our arm nodes are is a huge amount of clear space that's very flat. But there are some trees and some other stuff in the way down here, including a barrel nut tree. So while you're gathering all of your, like, you know, wood and your leaves and stuff using a chainsaw, go ahead and come over here and just kind of cut these down to make this place over here even cleaner. And yes, that does include the lowly barrel nut tree as well. You can even come down here where the green gas is and you can kind of cut a little bit down over in here. Just make sure you don't get into that gas. Remember, if it's green, it's bad. All right, now hopefully by this point you guys have plenty of enough leaves and wood and everything else that we're going to need. So the next process is we are going to build a storage container right over somewhere kind of out of the way a little bit but kind of close you don't want it too far away so I'm gonna build mine rack right over here and I'm gonna have it kind of facing this way yeah something about like that and I'm gonna kind of center it up too so we're gonna go here and then we're going to build a constructor out here right in front of that right here uh is that lined up it says it is all right and then we're going to add another storage building right here in front of that and then we're just going to connect these all with conveyor belts like so all right now what we want to do is just head over into your crafting station and just all the biomass that you or yeah all the leaves and wood and stuff that you just got go ahead and turn that into regular biomass for the moment so we're going to go in here and the wood is probably the quickest. So again, make sure you have some space here. Click on the wood and let's make some biomass. Also, go ahead and turn your leaves into biomass as well. Just basically get as much biomass as you can. Don't make the solid biofuel yet though. That's what we just made the constructor for with the two containers. All right, now that you've got all that at this point, possibly you may have ran out of fuel in one of your machines here or possibly all of them. Go ahead and plop some biomass in there for the time being, and then restart your fuse box. There we go. Now the next thing is we also, I kind of forgot to put power to this, so don't forget to do that. We are definitely going to need that. All right, connecting there to there. We're gonna come down to our constructor, and we're gonna tell it to make solid biofuel. And then we're going to take and put all of our biomass that we made or have left i should say into the first cargo container here so go ahead hold control click on that and that throws it all in there and it's going to start feeding that biomass 
into this constructor, which is going to turn it into solid biofuel, come out on this end, and put it into this one. And we should get a bunch of this very, very soon. Now, while we are waiting on that to go ahead and do its thing, let's have it over here and let's see how much concrete we have right now at the moment. We have 458. That's a lot of concrete, you would think, but it's, it's honestly not. And remember, we are using an impure node here, so we're not getting really the maximum that we possibly could out of that. So for our next video, uh, which again, I was supposed to be this video, but I had more things to talk about and I just wanted to kind of get caught up and, and get everything kind of done before we jumped into this big project. Uh, but yeah, if you need to and you feel like you need more concrete, uh, if you're not producing that fast enough, you think, go over there to the other node right over there where I'm pointing at and well, basically where Bob's heading. Uh, he, maybe he wants to eat some limestone. I don't know, but go over to the limestone node over there and set you up another uh, limestone mine and constructor for the concrete, if you need to. You don't have to do that. I'm getting by just fine on this one and I don't mind waiting for it. So, but if you want to kind of speed things up, you can certainly do that. Now, something else I will mention real quick is your notice right over here. Right on top of that rock is this blue thing, and that is a slug. That's a power slug. So I'm not going to go into the power slugs during this episode, but you know, if we we will go into that probably not the next one, but the next one after that, we'll talk about that because it has to do with the the researching and stuff. So you can go ahead and do that if you want. You can kind of get a jump start, but I'm not going to discuss it in this episode. So now that we got obstacle clearing out, we've talked about the chainsaw, we're getting biofuel and other things kind of going here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our hub terminal and we want to go ahead and choose another milestone. Now I would recommend probably going ahead and doing parts assembly because that gives you the assembler. Now we don't necessarily need to be making any of these other things right now, but the parts assembler is something we will need for the next part of our video. You could also maybe go ahead and grab the conveyor lift mark II, stackable conveyor pills, this. So either one of these, parts assembly or logistics mark II, you could work on next. Um, hey, you could even jump into resource sync program if you wanted to. That's something else we could totally jump into. Uh, essentially, the only thing we probably don't need is jump pads, but you know, hey, maybe, maybe you might want to go ahead and get that out of the way now. But yeah, just choose one of these because these are probably going to be, we're going to go through all of these and get them all done probably in the next video. But me personally, I'm going to go with parts assembly. Now there's one more thing I want to discuss in this video before we jump into the next video, which will be up tomorrow, uh, is I want to discuss the world axis and how to place things down on that. So. If you followed my instructions today, then you should have the foundation in one of your hotbar slots down there. Let's go ahead and bring that up, shall we? There we go. So, as you can see, you can move this anywhere around, kind of anywhere you want. You can also scroll with your mouse wheel and turn it, like so. Uh, yeah, and that that's something that you could place anywhere on the map. But if you hold down Control, you will notice that it only lets you place it in certain blocks like so and that's because it is aligning this to the world axis that's essentially what this is doing so there is an axis that runs all the way across the map think of it as the equator line and to this essentially will let you line things up if you're building on a, a different place on the map somewhere and you want to make sure everything lines up the way it should Hold down control and that's going to align this to that. Now, I'm going through this because we are going to be doing this in the next video where we are building our foundation for our starter factory. So we might as well just go ahead and get a good start on this right now. So hold down control. And we should be standing on top of this rock right here. Over there is the R nodes, right? So you'll see that rock over there and this rock over here. What we're going to do is we're going to place down a foundation right here. Just uh, not in the rock, but right next to it. And you can place this anywhere you want down through here. Just as long as it's not over this way. Just 
anywhere in this line. Uh, I'm going to place mine like right here. And then I'm going to talk about something else that we're going to be using. And this is the building and stuff. So there is something new that they added. And it's a wonderful, wonderful technique of building that they added in Update 5 called Zoop Mode. So if you look right here on my screen, you'll see currently building foundation 2 meter. You'll see the materials you need underneath of it. Right in the middle, you'll see build mode is default. So if you hold down R, you'll see this radial menu come up, uh, much like scanning. So you'll see we have default, vertical, and zoop. So let's go ahead and choose zoop. Uh, so go ahead and put highlight zoop and then let go of R. Another way you can do it is if you just tap R, you'll see it goes from build mode default, build mode zoop, build mode vertical. So let's put that back on zoop. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to take this right here and connect it to that and click once and then scroll outwards with your mouse. Just kind of move your mouse up that way. You'll see how that builds like that. That is pretty awesome. Zoop mode is fantastic. It lets used to you'd have to place these individually all the way up through there. Now we can just go meow, like that to a maximum of 10 foundation leaves. Which we are going to go ahead and do, honestly. Alright, so I'm not going to build the rest of this uh, until the next video. But I did just kind of want to go over this because it saves time in the next video. And we don't have to go over the world axis and zoop. And we can jump straight into actually building the rest of our base. So, that is going to do it for this video. I will be back with another video tomorrow morning. I'm having to split this into two, basically, so the videos aren't as long that we are going to begin construction of our starter factory. So guys, join me for that tomorrow. I will show you how to build an awesome looking, efficient starter factory now that we've got all the basics out of the way. Until then, wherever you guys are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. See you next episode.